at uh, um, and urban development. Um, so, uh, as I'm sure you're all aware, we are. This is part of our urban management and development webinar series. Uh, we hope to launch. We do these sessions every uh, few years, just as an opportunity to provide an information session um, on the flagship master's course that we do here at IHS. So what we've done today is we have prepared a short overview, um, sort of a 20, 30 minute presentation. Um, and what we'll do at the end is we'll leave another 20, 30 minutes to uh, answer any questions you have. So if, during the presentation, if you do have any questions, please feel free to put them in the chat. And what we'll do is we'll make sure to circle back and answer them individually at the end. Okay, so uh, as I said, I'm here representing the admissions office and I'm here with Dr. Alberto Giannoli and Dr. Alexander Loss, uh, who are the academic coordinators for the Urban Environment, Sustainability and Climate Change uh, Master's Track. Um, I'll hand over to them shortly uh, to introduce themselves, uh, but first I'll just introduce the agenda for the presentation. Next slide, please. Yes, right. So as I said, um, I'll do a small introduction. Um, I'm looking at, uh, at the people attending the session. I see some names I recognize, some prospective students, uh, some students who have already applied. So the idea is that we'll be able to provide um, uh, a full category of, uh, of information for all of you, people who have already applied or are thinking about applying. Um, what we'll do also is I'll hand over to the academic colleagues to talk about the course content in a bit more detail. Um, after that point, we will contextualize this a bit more, looking at sort of student profiles, we'll discuss um, some of the research topics that our recent alumni have done, um, as well as some of the um, uh, organizations and roles that our alumni tend to do after graduating from IHS. Um, and then finally, at the end, we'll do practical matters, um, what to, how to prepare an application, some important uh, practical information about dates and admission requirements. Uh, before we answer in all of your questions. So thank you very much for your time. Um, but now let's dig into the actual agenda. So um, as I said earlier, the Urban Environment, Sustainability and Climate Change track uh, is one of six master's tracks within the Urban Management and Development Programme here at IHS. Um, we have been running this programme for about 18 years, although it has changed significantly over that time. Um, one of the reasons we have uh, segmented this programme into six individual master's tracks uh, is to give students an opportunity to specialize within uh, their field of interest. So uh, throughout the year structure, you'll be focusing within your um, chosen topic of specialization. However, we also know that urban development is a highly interdisciplinary field. Um, and something we really sort of promote at IHS is uh, approaching urban problems from different uh, perspectives and uh, different perspectives. So what this means is that you'll still be working within other groups as well. Uh, within block one, you'll also be working uh, with the other tracks that we have, uh, doing general courses, a lot of group work as well. Uh, we do action planning workshops um, and simulated working so that you can understand um, how, urban how urban problems are approached from different uh, aspects and uh, areas. Um, as I said, so in block two, you'll specialize further within the field and you'll really be sort of gearing up towards your master's thesis at this point preparing um, for your research proposal. Um, and so the, th the thesis period will begin around March of every year. Um, this is quite a long um, uh, thesis period in which you have three or four months to do data collection, uh, to potentially do field work um, and to write up your final thesis. So it is an intensive one year program. It runs from um, late September every year to um, uh, late August every year. Um, and so the idea is that in that time, we hope to give you as much exposure to all of the academic expertise at IHS. Um, and we, we think it's a very positive program. Can we move to the next slide, please? So at this point, I'd like to introduce my colleagues and I'll hand over to Dr. Alexander Loss. Thank you, Fabio. Hello, good um, morning, good afternoon. The, um, my name is Alexander Loss. I'm the coordinator of the Urban Environmental and Sustainable Climate Change um, Specialization track. Mm, uh, my research interests are, um, of course, climate change. I'm a climatologist and um, related to um, especially citizen science, so the involvement of citizens in tackling um, climate-related problems. Um, I'm also working on urban heat island effects and using, making use a lot of satellite data and uh, other uh, observation data on the ground and from space. And uh, lastly, but not least, 
I'm working also with models to bring all these elements together. Thank you, Alexander. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening to everyone. My name is Alberto Ginoli. I'm uh, Italian. I've been working at IHS for about 10 years, and I'm an associate professor at IHS in Erasmus University, Rotterdam. Uh, my main areas of interest and expertise include uh, climate change, governance, and finance, but I also work uh, more broadly on climate change uh, mitigation adaptation uh, processes and also decision making, uh, which uh, includes cost benefit analysis, uh, cost effectiveness analysis, analysis and multi criteria uh, decision making. Uh, and I also like very much working with uh, large data sets. Uh, dealing with uh, uh, environment and climate change issues and to apply statistics, econometrics and also more advanced algorithms such as supervised and unsupervised machine learning. Uh, so these are more or less the, the areas where I work, but uh, um, over the years I've also worked in other areas, for example, in infrastructure, water, uh, transport, energy, and I like to relate all these to uh, climate change and urban environment issues. Thank you. So uh, Alexander and I are part of the team, the Urban Environment, uh, uh, Sustainability and Climate Change Master Track, but we work very closely with three other colleagues. Uh, one is Elena Ensenado from the Philippines. Then we have Somesh Sharma from India and Lara Anike from uh, Brazil. So this is the core team which is involved in the Master Track. At the same time, we are also uh, working closely and cooperating with other colleagues from other Master Tracks. For example, Paul Rabé, who is the coordinator of the Land Master Track, Alois Bongua, who is uh, uh, IHS lead specialist in finance, and others. So the, the people you see here are, uh, the, as I said, the, the core uh, uh, colleagues involved in the Master Track, but they will not be the only one you will work with if you uh, uh, join this Master Track. Uh, we also uh, uh, use uh, and cooperate with a, a, a wide network of external lecturers and uh, specialists uh, and i think this makes really for a strong team uh, uh, we, uh, a team which is able to to, to deal with a, with a range of, of topics and also uh, you have to take into account that usually this master track is uh, widely attended we uh, i think this year for example we have over 40 students and of course having a large team is uh, uh, is an important factor to guarantee quality uh, in, the, in the learning process Next one, please, Mika. Yes, thank you, Alberto. So why study our specialization? Um, first of all, it's related to climate change. It is, um, um, the climate change is a driver um, behind the, uh, the problems we are looking at, we are concerned about in, the, in an urban environment. For this, you need to understand the basics of the climate, of climate change, uh, climatology, and the related um, possibilities how to make cities more sustainable, more resilient. For that, we um, start our uh, course with uh, the theories, the more the concept side of um, the, the problem to learn about the um, how to manage and um, make cities more resilient and more sustainable. But um, besides the tools and the theories, uh, besides the concepts and the theories, we want to also learn you how to apply the, 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 the knowledge. And for that, we um, introduce several tools and methodologies for analyzing the urban environment and the risks of climate change. So in, in together, this will give a quite complete picture of the problem, the risks, and the capabilities to uh, make cities um, more sustainable and resilient, and uh, to make them, for example, more waterproof, less pollutant, um, how to deal with um, the urban nexus, uh, water, food, waste, energy, for instance. And uh, so there is a very diversified, um, um, we, we cover a lot of uh, topics, very diversified program. In the end, you will learn, um, to um, from the projects we are in, the research projects, which are also very helpful also for your research period, for your uh, thesis research period, where you can participate in ongoing research and real life projects. And uh, as Alberto already mentioned, we have also a broad network of international organizations that are related to our course. So 
the components of the specialization, we have um, three main, um, let's say, um, categories, which are the theory, the analysis, and the application. The, uh, the first one introduces the concept about climate mitigation, urban and water resilience, nature-based solution, circularity, energy transition, climate smart cities, and more. And the analy analytical uh, category includes um, the, the theoretical, uh, the, um, the urban environment and the consequences of climate change on the water, bodies, the ecosystems, energy systems, uh, and the, the, the pollution aspects, and especially also vulnerable groups um, and uh, the governments and uh, climate and circular economy. And um, finally, you will learn how to, as these different methods help you to turn this information into practical solutions. Therefore, you will not only learn about the tool simulation, simulations, uh, and we will also introduce you to GIS, and the applications of GIS and the programming possibilities to make um, proper analysis with um, the data. Next slide. So um, what are the pillars of our UESC master track? There are four. Let's start with the first one. This is the urban environment, and climate change, greenhouse gas and pollution uh, part. So this is also representing the structure of the specialization. And in this first pillar, we, want to, we will cover the, the topics um, about climate change adaptation mitigation, ecosystems in urban landscapes, vulnerable in, um, let's sorry, um, urban environment and, and climate change, greenhouse gas pollution, yes, will be about the sustainability and circularity, the greenhouse gas emissions, assessment, air quality, and heat island effect. Um, next one, please, Alberto. No, the, please stay on the previous slide. Yes, Alberto. Okay. Yeah, sure. So, uh, as Alexander mentioned, these are the four pillars that we will cover, uh, besides our environment, climate change, and greenhouse gas emissions and pollution. We will also look at sustainability, resilience, and vulnerability. These are very important concepts uh, which we are going to deal with, and we will look at them separately. So, we will look at these concepts uh, one by one, but we will also look at their interactions. And also, we will look at, at this concept from a theoretical perspective. So what is the, the theory behind sustainability, resilience, and vulnerability? But also, what are, the what are the practical applications? How can cities, urban areas worldwide achieve a high level of sustainability and resilience and reduce vulnerability? So this is, I think, uh, a sort of common approach that we follow at IHS. We want our students to have a solid, a solid theoretical understanding of the concepts we deal with, but then also we want them to be able to apply them in, in practice. Uh, the third pillar is uh, urban ecosystem service and nature-based solutions. So nature-based solutions are, action, are actions inspired by nature, uh, which means uh, they deploying various uh, natural processes and features uh, in a resource efficient and sustainable manner. Uh, Nature-based solutions have become uh, a, a growing focus of attention uh, worldwide, uh, and they can be used for adaptation, mitigation, and also for disaster risk reduction. And also, they are uh, uh, an excellent complement to more traditional approaches uh, related to grey infrastructure. So this, I think, is a very interesting pillar, and uh, a pillar that usually uh, attracts a lot of interest from our students because of its practical uh, application. And the last one is uh, uh, participa participation, inclusion, and governance uh, within a smart city context. Alexander, I think you're going to explain a little bit about this one. Yes, thank you. So um, this one includes the uh, theoretical approaches to governing global environmental challenges. So um, for instance, um, also the, the, the way that smart cities are um, making the environment more sustainable, um, the green, an, intro, an inter interesting subject, which is included here also, is the green gentrification. That is a, a, a diffi difficult subject. While making cities more sustainable and more resilient, this could also mean that um, the, uh, the, the, um, um, the, the, the justice is, is less um, pronounced. And, the, and in fine, last but not least, this includes also an important subject 
which is the urban energy systems and transition, energy system and, and energy transition. So the, um, we give you some examples of tools and methodologies that are applied during our um, specialization period. So the scenario analysis includes um, a simulation tool that is used um, to um, um, learn about the natural and built environment to assess the environmental challenges, um, such, as, such as flooding, droughts, and heat waves, for example, um, by um, running a, um, a simulation tool that um, um, simulates the urban environment in a very detailed way so that you can learn uh, the consequences of certain actions um, and measures. Then the climate change risk assessment um, does mean that you um, can learn from um, methodologies that have been developed um, by, um, for example, C40, a, a very important um, um, the, um, as, um, um, community uh, or uh, cities, cities initiatives that uh, allow you to um, understand the um, possibilities and uh, opportunities in, uh, in a city, in an urban environment to make cities resilient and sustainable, climate sustainable. And um, also how to learn from historical events and how to analyze future projections um, for, uh, for climate mitigation. And the action game is um, an interesting, um, serious game that we want to um, play. At the, towards the end of specialization, which um, is, um, sim, um, let's say, um, mimic, that mimics uh, an, an urban na United Nations climate conference, where all the stakeholders are invited to um, negotiate and to find final or, or tangible solutions to reduce global warming according to the Paris Agreement goals, so to keep global warming, for example, below 1.5 degrees Celsius. And last but not least, in the GIS and data anal analytics are tools that we mm, support, that we um, encourage you to, to use. Um, both are teached partially during the core period before the specialization and partially during our specialization period using uh, dedicated courses. It, even uh, sometimes uh, they, they are um, also, it's also free to you to use, uh, to um, uh, follow these courses online. So that gives some more room to apply, to concentrate on the application of the programming tools. So the example of the study visits, we also have study visits, usually about four during the specialization period. Those are rather interesting diversified excursions to different cities in the Netherlands. Uh, first of all, we are, have two in Amsterdam, that is the Amsterdam Smart City on the left upper side, and uh, to the right lower side is Citizen Science at, um, at another organization in Amsterdam. The Smart, uh, the smart City project um, is actually, or the, the Smart City um, group is actually supporting projects in and around Amsterdam to prove how or to experiment with energy neutral and circular um, communities. And this is, for instance, um, it's still very difficult in, in many countries in Europe, I guess, to take um, a, a regional or a decentralized energy production community off the grid. Um, and it could be possible in the future and has also to be um, developed in that direction. So microgrids become very important and are already under, under development. And these, this organization supports these initiatives and we show um, and we, we, uh, we discuss with, their, with them these initiatives in Amsterdam and you can visit them uh, and um, to get an impression um, how, how efficient and how interesting these projects can be. The Climate Smart um, the Climate Proof Initiative in uh, Rotterdam will be um, a partially self-guided tour along climate resilient projects, showing how the threat of the water in the Rotterdam area can be turned into opportunities to make the city more climate proof. Then the room for the river in, Ny in Nijmegen uh, uh, at the eastern part of the Netherlands 
is an impressive um, project that has been realized already uh, quite a, a while ago, maybe 20 years, that shows impressively how the region managed to prevent flooding events um, caused by the river. And uh, this is also quite a substantial threat where the um, river discharge can create severe floodings. And this project shows how this um, has to be prevented by escaping rooms that have to be created to give the river more room in, in case of very strong discharge events. Last but not least, citizen science. Citizen science um, is getting very popular in, in the sense that um, engaged um, citizens want to um, take action again uh, or to cover or to track tackle their problems and their concerns about the environmental um, pollution problems. And um, for instance, this one here is about air pollution, where citizens construct their own measurement sensors and they put them up in the city and the in and around the city. However, how to use that data is another issue. And uh, interesting projects we are doing here are related to um, connecting the research community to the citizen science community to make um, to create much more out of the project than if one and each would act separately. So these are interesting engagement projects related to environmental problems. Thank you, and thank you, Alex. Um, that was that was great to go through. Um, I think what we've tried to really do so far through the through the presentation so far is to really explain um, not just sort of um, the multifaceted problems that are arising from issues around climate change and sustainability, uh, but equally. Um, we're very inter intervention led at IHS. We're very much focused at what are the what are possible solutions to these um, issues. Um, and equally, you can see from not just the practical skills that you gain within the course, but also the specific pillars, um, as well as the uh, practical skills that we're teaching uh, are really all designed around um, developing urban professionals who are able to lead in sort of these preventative measures. Um, something that is also to be said is that we benefit from um, all the capacities of being a university in the Netherlands, uh, being part of Erasmus University as well. Um, so Erasmus University is one of the only campus led um, universities in the Netherlands, uh, which means that you're um, hosted within um, a large uh, international campus, but you're also um, attached to all of the infrastructure and facilities of that campus. Um, IHS is just one faculty um, and equally uh, lots of our students are have the option to participate in a number of sort of student-led initiatives including there's a sustainability hub uh, hosted at the university uh, alongside many other different um, organizations. Equally uh, there's something to be said for um, the, the IHS student body itself. Um, so typically uh, the, uh, the UMD program holds about 100 to 150 um, urban specialists. Um, typically within the urban sustainability track, we have 30 to 40 uh, students working specifically in this field. And it's completely diverse. Uh, these students will be from anything from 40 to 50 different countries. Um, and it will contain uh, governance specialists. It might contain climate scientists. Um, it, they could be engineers. They could be uh, local uh, government administrators. Um, they're all bringing a practical knowledge. Um, from their own sort of geographies and their own professional experiences. Um, and the great thing, as uh, was uh, Alex has just highlighted, um, is that Rotterdam is a great case study for this as well. There's a huge amount of infrastructure happening within Rotterdam um, in the space of uh, uh, climate change adaptation. Um, uh, these include sort of um, uh, circular economy initiatives, uh, but also sort of um, a number of sort of uh, startups that are that really use Erasmus University as a hub to sort of exp um, look at sort of urban in innovations in the field of sort of climate change adaptation. Finally, as I said at the beginning, um, all of the all of our urban management and development students um, gain from the facilities offered at IHS. These are the study visits that Alexander highlighted earlier, but there's also a suite of uh, guest lecturers that are built into the program and supplementary services. Um, and these could be guest lecturers from um, um, research partners or project partners that we're currently completing abroad uh, or from large organizations, including UN Habitats. Uh, can we go to the next slide, please? Yeah, so this is just a, a small breakdown of the kind of things that you might be studying during your, um, 
your thesis period. Um, maybe I can hand back over to uh, Alberto Alexander, who maybe talk. Yes, in a thank bit you, Fergal. Yes, I, just, just briefly, uh, the thesis, of course, uh, probably the most important piece of work uh, each student will do while at IHS uh, because of the of the length of time that uh, uh, the students will, will spend on, on the thesis. And here you have a sort of non-comprehensive overview of some of the topics that you may want to, uh, uh, to, to do your thesis on, uh, ranging from uh, urban sustainability transition. Uh, transition theory is, of course, a very important branch of environmental science that deals with long-term transition processes to circular economy, which is of uh, an area of growing interest with very interesting examples uh, in, a, in a number of cities uh, in, in the Netherlands. Also, we, we, we cover a thesis supervision on uh, finance and governance of climate, uh, uh, climate change, climate change adaptation, climate change mitigation. We also are able to supervise theses that link environment and climate change to certain infrastructure sectors like water, transport, and energy. And also, as was mentioned, this is one of the pillars. We are also interested in strictly a governance process, including community participation in disaster risk reduction or uh, uh, climate change mitigation adaptation. So in general, we give students uh, the freedom to, to decide which topic, which topic they want to do their thesis on, but also we provide them with the opportunity to join some of our ongoing projects, research projects or advisory projects, so that they can link their research topic to one of, our, uh, to one of the activities that the staff is involved with. So there is some flexibility, and I think we, we pride ourselves on being able to provide very high quality supervision, uh, which uh, results often in excellent uh, research, which uh, maybe, Mika, if you could uh, switch to the next slide, results, may result in publication. So quite a few of our students in the past have been able to publish their, their thesis. Uh, in uh, peer review journals, good quality peer review journal. This is just one example, but there are many others. Of course, not everybody may be interested in this, but for those of you that maybe uh, uh, would like to pursue uh, a career in the academia, of course, being able to, to publish uh, your, your master thesis is a big advantage. And uh, we, we are able to provide support, we have experience, and uh, this is, of course, an opportunity which uh, uh, some of you may be interested in. Um, in terms of career opportunities, uh, I'm, I'm sure you, you know that you know, climate change, urban environment are, 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 are topics which are very high on the agenda of decision makers worldwide at the urban, regional, national, international level. And we think that uh, this master track provides the students with the skills which are required to, to be able to, to make the best of these opportunities. The, the market for, for jobs, for green jobs is booming. And uh, our students have uh, in the past had no problem whatsoever in finding very interesting uh, job opportunities in the Netherlands or abroad. Again, here you see some examples. Um, it is an uncomprehensive list. Some students, some, students some, some of our former students have been able to secure PhD positions in the Netherlands or abroad, quite a few of them, in fact, and the number is growing. Others have joined uh, a renowned multilateral organizations like the, U the UN, UN Habitat, uh, the Asian Development Bank, uh, the African Development Bank, UNDP, UNDP, the public sector, or also the private sector. So it's uh, it, it really uh, it, it depends on the interests of the students. It depends on the on the skills they acquire. It depends on the master thesis. But the bottom line is that what we see, and this is something, of course, that we are very happy with is that our students uh, in general have no difficulties whatsoever in securing interesting jobs at the end of their of their master track. Uh, in terms of the profiles, uh, we, uh, we admit and we are happy to work with students from a variety of different backgrounds ranging from economics to urban and regional planning, engineering, geography, environmental studies, uh, and, and this reflects both the, pre, the, the, the previous education and the previous working experience, if any. Um, in terms of working experience, we also uh, 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 admit students that do not have any working experience, so students that are freshly graduates from their, from their BA or BSc. That's not a problem for us. Also, we, also, in this respect, we are quite flexible. 
and the range of, of background also reflects the range of expertise that we can offer uh, uh, in, in the master track. Uh, as I mentioned, we have five staff that are the core staff. Uh, all of us have different expertise. I'm an economist by background. Alexander is a physicist. We have uh, planners. We have uh, social scientists. So this means that we can accommodate different backgrounds, different experiences. And actually, I think we, we benefit from this. And also our students benefit from, maybe, from being able to work with, with peers that have a background which is different from, from theirs. Thank you. Back to you, Fergal, I think. Yeah, thank you very much, Alberto. Yeah, so um, I hope that was all uh, helpful and informative. Um, this is all very much the questions that we, we get all the time, sort of what is a typical IHS student? Uh, what can I really be a typical experience studying at IHS? And something we always say in the admissions office is that there really is no one type of IHS student. There is no one who, one um, biography that would fit into a particular track. Um, we really are enriched by the variety we have in the classroom. Um, and so I always say students who are interested um, it, within a certain topic are always welcome to contact us and ask these questions directly. We're always happy to give that advice individually. Um, just moving to some practical considerations. Um, these things are obviously important to think about. Um, so uh, it's an intensive 12 month program. Generally, what I would say is a lot of our students already have some degree of professional experience. Um, and what they're really doing is they're coming to IHS to um, uh, pro uh, develop professionally and very often it's a case of reorienting orientating their career in another um, in another field and so what they're really looking to do is uh, do an intensive 12 month program so they can re-enter the workforce um, as soon as possible with the skills gained from up the uh, classes taught at IHS um, as I said intensive 12 months so uh, typically the term starts in September 2022 we run our orientation program in the second half of September um, and the thesis period will run all the way through the summer until August when we'll have a final graduation ceremony here in Rotterdam. Um, the tuition fee is a fat, flat tuition fee for all students and um, it's 14,900 euros. Again, it, this is something that we always want to highlight now because there's a degree of financial planning to do at this time of the year. Um, something to bear in mind is there is an early bird discount. So anyone who um, applies before the 15th of April and completes payment before the 1st of June will receive a 1,000 euro uh, tuition fee waiver, um, which is in surplus to um, any scholarships or um, tuition waivers that you may have gained from external bodies. Something we always point our students toward is we do uh, maintain a scholarship and funding database on our websites. Um, it's meant to be comprehensive. It does um, um, it does cover most of the globe, but obviously this is a living sort of document. So um, we're always excited to hear about new funding options and to sort of walk you through that process, process if IHS can facilitate in a funding letter of any kind like that. Um, can we move to the next slide, please? Yes. Now, um, as I said, I know some of you are have already applied. Some of you may have uh, deferred. Um, and some of you are thinking about applying. Um, as I said, um, there is no uh, one uh, background or one uh, type of application that will be successful. Um, and what we do as a mission department, working closely with Alberto and Alexander, is uh, we really look to make a, a composite assessment of uh, an application based on a number of criteria. Um, something we are looking for is a BA or BSc qualification from a recognized university um, with a reasonably high attainment grade uh, British 2-1 or a grade of about 80% in the Dutch system. Um, this, um, what we do look for is a uh, demonstrable um, interest in uh, the urban development field. We know this might not be direct, so this could be any of the fields that um, Alberto um, listed earlier. This could be um, a geography base, this could be someone working in a um, public administration or social sciences, but equally um, a lot of our classroom are filled with architects, engineers, um, people with a specific professional background who are looking to um, expand that field of expertise within the urban development sector. Um, what we do need from all of our students is a proof of ability um, of sufficient level of English ability. Um, this will either be th through completing a, your undergraduate degree uh, in, the, in English with evidence that you can provide of this or an IELTS uh, test score of at least 6.5. Um, as we said before, working experience um, is something that is highly favoured um, and is something that will be looked at through your CV and also through a motivational letter which you will provide. 
Um, but again, we look at all of these criteria um, as a composite value um, to really make an informed decision on how you would fit within our classroom and the sort of classroom dynamics. Um, but as I said, if you're thinking about applying and you're not sure, contact our officers. We're always happy to give that kind of advice on a one, one by one basis. OK, so that's everything. Um, I really hope that, that was helpful for everyone. Um, I see some questions have been filtering in slowly through the chat. So what I suggest we do is um, I will run up to the top of the chat and I'll try and collect them. If um, I miss one, please, uh, someone feel free to jump in. Equally, if you would like to ask a question directly, you're, please feel free to unmute yourself uh, and ask um, through your mic as well. Okay, so I see a question here. Um, can I do my research on site? So I'm guessing the thesis topic. Um, uh, Alberto, would you be willing to answer that question, please? So if I understand correctly, the question is whether uh, uh, you may be able to do your research in your own country. Is that right? Yeah, I think, uh, it, yeah, in my home country or in Rotterdam, I assume, would, as also a case study would also work. Yeah, yes, of course. I mean, uh, we have students that travel back to their own country to collect data and do the field work there. We have students that prefer to do their field work in the Netherlands, in Rotterdam or in any other city. Again, there is flexibility. Uh, everything depends on your research interest and on your research question. So all options are, um, uh, are open. Uh, yeah. Fergus, sorry, I think there, is, there was a question before this one, if I have also the chat open. Um, from me, Mir is asking if she can do a, the thesis on a topic not closely related to the focus of the track. Yes. Sander, you would like to answer to this question? Yeah, yes. The, um, it, it depends on what you mean with closely related to the focus of the track. Um, it should somehow be related to climate issues or environmental issues. But let's say if it's an environmental issue which is not directly related or coming from or due to climate change, it's also fine. But it should how, somehow connect to the subjects we are covering in the specialization period. If you want to, if you have a, a concrete idea, just let me know. I can always uh, comment on this. Yeah, it's something to be said as well. It's that I always try to make clear to students at the application stage. We do expect you to make an application to a specific master's track because you will be gaining, um, that will be your degree diploma. It will be within urban sustainability and climate change. Um, however, if your topic is uh, similarly has a, a bearing on uh, housing insecurity, you would absolutely be welcome to work with our housing team or a professor within our land track if there is an opportunity to be supervised by someone with it from uh, both this specialization and another specialization. That is something can be, can be facilitated, but uh, as Alexander said, we're always led by the topic itself. Okay, can I? So, uh, Gilda asks, apart from the master's degree, is there an opportunity for PhD supervision and scholarship funding? Is there a format of proposal research to apply? Uh, okay, I can jump on that one. Uh, Kilda, I'm very happy to see that you're already thinking about your PhD. Uh, we're always excited to uh, meet, meet new PhD researchers. Um, something that I would say is uh, it's a very separate process. So if you have questions about the PhD, contact the admissions office and we can have a separate discussion with you. Um, but some things to highlight here. Um, some of our students who are extremely capable uh, and do an extremely strong master's degree are able to combine this into a, um, uh, a period of PhD research um, where you'll use your master's uh, thesis topic um, as your research proposal. Um, so we're always interested in, in um, accepting uh, PhD candidates. Um, however, it must be made clear that uh, IHS has no funded positions um, and we have a very limited um, overview of sort of uh, scholarship options or funding options for PhD researchers. So the vast majority of our PhD students at IHS are either self-funded or funded through uh, uh, direct employer sponsorship. Um, and there is a uh, format for the proposal. Uh, if you check our website, you'll find a template and a, a advice on how to prepare a good research proposal for a PhD. I hope that answers your question, Kilda. Thank you. Okay. So Winnie asks, my interest is in sustainability in buildings, green building design. 
would this be an appropriate master track for me or would I be able to do my thesis in the same? Would you maybe be able to ask answer that one maybe, Alexander? Yes, um, sustainability in building, screen building design. Mm. There is, this might be an overlap with, with another specialization, but um, therefore you might also have, can probably also listen to the, to the specialization related to, to, to green environment. Maybe Frugal, you can mention the, the correct name of the specialization. Uh, yes. Uh, so we do have a specialization. I, I see what Alexander is saying. This very much falls between uh, uh, two categories. So to be honest, I think it will be very um, led by where your um, research interest ends up. Uh, we do have um, a specialization specifically looking at uh, the built environment um, and, and uh, green infrastructure. Um, we should be very much looking at this. It very much is a slightly more tailored towards issues around the circular economy, I would say as well. Um, but so um, I think that's exactly what these webinars are for. Um, I agree with uh, what Alexander said. I think it would be important that you uh, follow m probably more than one webinar um, and equally take the opportunity to contact um, our offices directly. And maybe we can give you a bit more um, a specific sort of understanding uh, when we understand your sort of your backgrounds and your experiences in a bit more detail as well. So yeah, maybe, I'd, I'd welcome an email from you. Maybe I can add to this. If your project or your um, subject would be related strongly to um, um, an overall um, um, improvement of the climate, of the resiliency or the sustainability of the city, then it would relate more to our specialization. If it would be more about construction and building, um, specific aspects of the problem, then it would probably be for another specialization. So also here you can come back to us um, and we will give you some, some feedback. Great. Okay, Tata asks, hello, is this a fully funded program? Okay, so Tata, it's a, it's a great question. So um, uh, IHS has no funding, funding itself. So any students who are not able to uh, fund their um, studies uh, independently, um, are welcome to uh, do it through uh, scholarship bodies and funding bodies. Um, there is a database on our website which can provide an overview of this information, but it's the responsibility of all of our students to source that information themselves. Um, I would advise you to maybe look at sort of opportunities with the World Bank. Um, they are quite a reputable um, organisation which we are partnered with for a student mobility fund. Okay, working down the list. Uh, to ask, what is an ideal education background for this master's track? Um, I really think it is, or maybe I can link this with the next one from Melvin, um, who has a background in chemistry. Um, there is no ideal background for this master's track. It really is, uh, we really do take in a, a wealth of experience um, and backgrounds when we complete an admissions assessment. And we make all assessments together with Alberto and Alexander as the academic coordinators. Uh, what I would say, chemistry is highly specific. It doesn't have an obvious um, relationship to uh, urban development. So it would be quite difficult to um, prove a relevance between the two fields. However, that's exactly why we have the motivational essay. Um, so we'd be very interested to understand what your, how your professional development and your professional experiences um, how, have brought you towards a degree in urban development. So. We'd be interested in you applying, um, but we really couldn't say now if it would be um, a viable fit, I would say. Okay. Uh, Mfaro asks, are there student loans to African students? Okay, um, I'll take this one as well. I hope no one minds. Um, so Mfaro, there is, I would ask you again to check the scholarship database on our website. Um, there are some funds, uh, there are some uh, international funding bodies that um, uh, are, are active within uh, the continent of Africa as well. Um, one of our largest uh, funding options would be the uh, Nuffic Orange Knowledge um, Program, which will still be running next year in a, in a smaller, more condensed format. Um, so check the eligibility on the website. Um, it's only available for certain countries. Um, so I would also recommend checking out the World Bank Scholarship as I listed earlier as well. Okay, um, 
I'm very interested in climate-induced displacements, but I am not sure if to join housing or the climate change track. Oof. Alberto, do you think maybe you can? Yes. Um, again, it depends. Uh, it depends on the specific focus of your of your uh, proposed uh, research uh, research topic. Uh, I currently am supervising uh, a PhD candidate from Bangladesh who is looking into um, climate-induced migration, which probably relates to what you have in mind. And this fits quite well within the, you know, the climate change uh, uh, area. But, but it varies, of course. It, 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 if, if you are particularly interested in, in, in the housing point of view, then probably uh, uh, you would be best uh, 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 you would be in a better position if you chose, decided to choose the housing specialization. So as, as Fergus says, it's, it's important for, for you to attend different uh, uh, webinars and also to get in touch with us, maybe with, a, with, with some more information about what you have in mind. And I'm sure we'll be able to advise you in, uh, uh, in the best possible way. Great, thank you very much, Alberto. But yes, I mean, issues, I think also there's something that comes through in the presentation is, um, because we're intervention that we, you know, climate change is, it, it, it doesn't appear the same way around the world. So if it's, if you're interested in displacement, that can be a climate change issue. If you're interested in many other issues, it could also be within this track or other tracks. Um, Mira asks, can I do an internship during my studies? Uh, Mira, thank you for that. It's a great question. We get it frequently. Um, something we always um, um, point out to students is, the program in reality is very intensive. Um, uh, there are classes um, almost every day, probably throughout the year. Um, if you don't have a class in the afternoon, you probably will have one in the morning. Uh, and that's just formal classes. That doesn't include all the, the group work, the assigned readings, the prepping, the prepping for exams that you're going to need to be doing. Um, so the what we always say is we if you want to apply for an internship, you're welcome to, but we highly uh, recommend that you focus on your studies for the one year that you're with us and i'd also highlight that ihs uh, frequently hires um interns ourselves um and you can find a, an active list of sort of intern opportunities on our website as well um katita asks can we pay in installments during the school year okay another good question one we one we get all the time uh, just be very clear um no student would be able to um, pay in installments um, to join this program. Um, we only accept full payments at, on the dates that we listed on the practical uh, page of this presentation. Um, and no student will be able to enter the program unless they were, had fully paid the full amount of their invoice at the beginning of the year. There are some changes to this. If you're sponsored by a scholarship body, uh, we, there are some caveats that means we can be flexible. But generally speaking, um, we have to, we can only uh, provide education to the students that have already um, met the financial requirement before the beginning of the program. Okay, so OKP is no longer there. Are there any other scholarships that international students can benefit from? So it really depends, as I said, please, um, that was a direct question, uh, email to me. Please go on um, our website. We do try and have a global overview so you can check the individual criteria and see if they are relevant for you. Uh, but uh, if you can't find anything, uh, you're again, you're welcome to contact us and we can see if we can find some other funding option for you. Okay, Siami Bila. How about someone who is intending to upgrade from a postgraduate diploma to a master's degree from the same institution? Are there any reservations for some courses? Siami uh, Bila, I'm not sure if I totally understand this question. Um, if you have a bachelor's degree, you're welcome to apply to join any of our master's degrees. It's the first thing I would say. Uh, but equally, if you have attended one of our professional development programs, one of our short courses, um, that would not work against you. Uh, we would only say um, we wouldn't advise a student who had already done um, a short course in a particular track to return to that same track. We would expect you to probably um, apply for a different field of expertise. Um, but equally, if you have done our urban management, um, you, uh, Alberto, what is UMTCC? I, I can't remember the title. Uh, urban Management Tools for Climate Change. Exactly, yes. Yeah. So this is very much um, in the same um, 
uh, field. If you were an alumni of that program, uh, you would still be very welcome to join um, this master's track. Um, a lot of the content will be similar, but obviously you'll be able to go into a lot more depth during a, a full postgrad um, master's degree. Okay. Mira asks, how competitive is the application process? How do I secure admission? Okay, Mira, so it, it's, uh, it's a great question. What I would say is um, IHS has a deliberately very long um, admission period. We give you um, as long as possible for you to create as competitive an application as possible. So um, applications are open now and they'll stay open until um, April. So there's more than six months to really work to optimize your application. Um, what I would say is uh, this, uh, the IHS master's program is generally uh, highly sought after. We get very high um, levels of applications um, and our rejection rate is more than 50%, I would say. Um, you're always welcome to um, uh, contact us beforehand to ask how to make an application slightly more competitive. Um, but we always provide similar advice. If I can say things to anyone, it's please take the time to read the course content that we provide on our master's page. Think about the, the modules that you'll learn, the content that uh, we've explained today, um, and explain how that interests you in your application. That is really what makes a, an application stand out to us, knowing that you're really engaged with the IHS program specifically. Um, and just to say again that we, we the, both the admissions team and Alberto and Alexander, we together will assess these applications to look for the best candidates. Okay, Zoe asks, I won't receive my final degree class score until June 2022, <clears throat> as I'm in the final. Uh, yes, Zoe, we, uh, this happens all the time to students. We understand um, that this is uh, the nature of um, the academic process, but this isn't a problem. You're welcome to apply to us, even if you have not received your bachelor's diploma yet. Um, if you can provide a transcript of current results, we can give you and you meet our criteria. You'll be um, issued a letter of conditional admission. This will be conditional on you receiving your final diploma. Um, but so all that means is that you're uh, welcome to complete the all of the admissions period um, and even the payment period and enroll in the program um, even before uh, June 2020, uh, 2022, when you will finally get your diploma. Okay. Carly asks, at what point in the process do students need to choose their thesis topic or find a supervisor? Okay, great question, Carly. Um, something I would say is, um, uh, again, as I said, the classroom is very varied. So we have students who have applied to us who already know exactly what they want to study. Um, but I would say they are, um, that's not common and it's not a requirement. Um, and that we really want you to uh, be in the classroom sort of thinking as you're going through the program about developing your thesis topic or, and finding a supervisor. So um, correct me if I'm wrong, Alberto, but I don't think there's any requirement for your thesis topic to be approved until uh, March, I think. Uh, that, that's right, Fergal. Uh, as, as, you, as you pointed out, some students may have an idea already before they start. Others will uh, develop the idea throughout the, special, the, the master track, the, the lectures of the master track. And of course, we provide all the possible uh, support and assistance when students are looking for a, for a thesis uh, topic. But okay. the ultimate deadline is March when the thesis process starts. Yeah, exactly. Okay, I'm just seeing the time and seeing that time is running out a little bit, so I might pick up the pace a little bit. Uh, Michelle asks if we accept people with an arts and humanities background. Yes, Michelle, as I said, um, uh, we're really looking at a composite value. So we don't just look at a specific value. We want to see your academic quality, your professional experiences, uh, and a dem uh, that you can demonstrate an interest in the course content of this track. Um, and if you can put forward a convincing argument, that still makes a strong application. Uh, Gloria, I'm passionate about sustainable housing. Um, is that a nice track for me? Uh, yes, Gloria, I think uh, you should follow all of our all of our webinars, maybe. Um, I, I, this is a very sort of open topic, so I really think you could apply it to almost any of the research um, hubs that we have here at IHS. Um, and again, there's on our website. 
Mira asks for an example of a group assignment or how classes go now during the pandemic. Okay. Alexander, would you maybe be able to talk about uh, blended learning maybe? Yes, yeah, blended learning. <laughs> yeah, we learned a lot. So we applied, <laughs> um, we applied uh, various methods nowadays, including um, online tools that help to work together like Miro very efficient way of working together um, in parallel to Zoom and to exchange platform or to exchange uh, information using those kind of platforms. It worked quite efficiently. And we also have adapted uh, our way of teaching a little bit, um, doing not the similar way of group um, assignments that we do in class. But this worked quite well. So we have quite uh, also really positive experiences with the online teaching. However, nowadays we uh, go back to school um, and we are back um, at on the campus work together with the students again directly yeah thank you very much um and something to say is that we never went fully online also at ihs so we were able to almost throughout the pandemic provide um a blended form of learning that meant there was always some um it wasn't fully online um so we're obviously very hopeful the next year we can be fully back in on back in the classroom but these things are all developing um, Gilda, I see your next question, and I think it's a great question. But I think contact the admissions office, and we will talk. We will talk directly because it's uh, something that we should talk about in a bit more detail. Okay, so I'm looking at everything. To me, it looks like we've answered all the questions. Um, so I would just like to say thank you on behalf of me and Alberto uh, and Alexander. I think it was a really great session. I think we really answered some of the big questions. And I really hope you guys found it helpful. Um, and again, if you do have any questions, uh, here, here is the data for the admissions office, and you can find mine and uh, Alberto and Alexander's and the rest of our colleagues' details online as well. So thank you very much, uh, and I hope to see you all in uh, September this year, next year. Thank you very much, everyone.